All right, good morning everyone. Uh, we're facing some technical issue from the YouTube site uh, earlier on. Uh, it's all good now. And today we're going to talk about uh, how to... Just give me a second. Okay, today we're going to talk about SQL, all right? And let me put on my slides. Sorry for the delay. Uh, so let me know in the in the chat, yeah, if you... Uh, if you if you can't see this stuff, uh, let's see. Right, I think everything should be fine. It looks okay from my end, and let me know if you can hear me loud and clear. Okay, so today we're going to talk about SQL, structured query language. Uh, SQL being one of the most important language in the world, okay, not just data science. And every every time when people ask me for my opinion, like Dr. Lau, what should I learn? If I, uh, what language should I learn if I want to break into tech or if I want to break into data science, right? The the comment that I always give them is that if you are breaking into data science, I will always suggest somebody to learn uh, Python and SQL. And if you are breaking into tech, then I will suggest everyone to learn JavaScript and SQL. These are the two things, that's the two must have. When I started my career, when I started learning computers, basically, I started from JavaScript and SQL. So, uh, long story short, SQL is a language, a specific language for us to interact with structured database. Structured database means like the relational database that you use to know, like for example, uh, MySQL, Microsoft SQL, and then uh, Oracle, Postgres. Uh, th these are just SQL databases, relational databases, structured databases, all in different flavors. Okay, I'm not going into the differences between like structured and unstructured. But if you have any questions on that, feel free to ask. The differentiations in the industry is more on relational and non-relational. But non-relational database is just picking up. the The cool thing is. 80% of the data that is digitized or dig uh, yeah, digitized right now is actually uh, structured data. So, but the, whole, the data, right, all the information in the world, only 20% of them are, are indexed and stored in the uh, structured database form. Okay, so just a, a, a quick facts. So first thing first, relational database, the characteristic of relational database is that we organize data into one or more tables. So if you, uh, if you have used this before, uh, used any SQL system before, or you have seen one before, they are actually uh, different tables. And all, when we are designing the tables, every single table represent a single concept for example if you're designing a movie rental database right uh, the movies the, the collection the movies collection itself will be a single table and then the uh, the customers who rent our movies will be another table and then um, the transactions will be another table so in relational database we try to organize data into different tables or to give you another example would be like e-commerce so you e e-commerce you have a lot of products you have a lot of SKUs right so uh, you will have a table just to store the product and another table to store the customers another table to store the suppliers and another table to store the relationship between uh, suppliers and your products and then another table to store the transactions uh, of your sales okay so this is number one the, the one characteristic of relational database and the second characteristic is each table has rows and columns i think this one everybody is familiar with the concepts it's similar to excel so you have rows and columns um rows is the entries okay so and columns is your attributes this is how you remember that you don't have to remember both you just have to remember one of them so column is you nobody store um columns with your entries and then your rows with the attributes we don't do that we usually store our attributes in the form of columns and store our entries in the form of rows and a unique unifier for each row uh, this is the most important concept in in sql if you were to learn sql you have to understand that every single row they must have a unique identifier otherwise a lot of things will happen and the the key thing about this unique identifier is for us to identify our record using something 
Okay, let's say if you are talking about our databases, we can have their email address as a unique identifier, we can have their IC number as identifier, or in some uh, use cases you want to mask or you want to anonymize their data, you can always come up with new uh, ID, user ID to uh, for as a unique identifier. But anyway, these are unique identifier for each row in the table. Uh, without further ado, let's let's take a look at the at an example as a real world example that makes it easier for you to understand. So this is a student table. Uh, typical student table, if you store this in Excel, um, you have ID, you have the first name of the students, and the last name of the students, the subject that they take, and also their marks. Okay, so this, is, this is usually how it looks like. And so let's let's go back to the definition here, right? We organize our data into one or more tables. So this is the marks, the students' marks table, and each table has rows and columns, as you can see. And the last one is a unique identifier for each row. So in this case, let's take a look at them one by one and see which one is a unique identifier. So let, let's don't look at the ID first. We all know that the ID is a unique identifier. Let's look at first name. Is first name good enough to be a unique identifier? Definitely not. Because when we look at the first name, they are duplicates. So Mohammed, there are two Mohammeds here, and they are referring to a different person, okay? Because this is the, the match result for two different students. And then, so we can't use first name, so we can go to the next one, which is last name. And last name, we have Fazli, we have Lau, we have Ashran, Ashran we have uh, Lau. So again, there are duplicates here. So last name is not good enough to be a unique identifier because you can't look at Lau and then use it to uniquely identify a single row. And we look at subjects, of course, it's can't because they're all the same and marks is definitely not a good one. So in this particular case, what we did is we come up with an ID, we assign an ID to each of the students. So they will be, uh, uh, if, you, if you say, I want to find, uh, let's say somebody come and search for a data, right? Uh, the, you, the, you, the teacher want to search for uh, the uh, exam results for Muhammad Ashran. Okay, for uh, I say Muhammad lah. Okay, they they just call Muhammad. Uh, then you ask, oh, which Muhammad? Or uh, Muhammad Ashran, and then one thousand three. Okay, or uh, the the other use case would be like, oh, I want to look for the student whose last name is Lau. Uh, which which one? Oh, okay, Johnson Lau, one thousand two. So in, in this example, you can see that you can use the first name and last name as a combination or you can use the ID as a unique the identifier. But of course, in real world, in practice, we don't use name as a uh, unique identifier because we know that chances are there will be duplicates names, right? Alright, so this is an example. Now, the concept of unique identifier in... Uh, SQL or in relational database design, right, is called a primary key. So the, the concept of primary key means that what is the minimal set of attributes or columns that can help us to uniquely identify a specific record in a table, okay? You just have to remember this one. And, oh yeah, I, I, was, I was talking about the reason of using primary key is not just because we want to uniquely identify a single row. This helps us to uh, retrieve our data when we want to update our data, but it also helps us to build index so that we can use some computer algorithms, computer science algorithms, to speed up the uh, retrieval speed or um, the processing speed of our database as well. Okay, so next up, I'm going to show you some a quick demo and a website that you can use to practice your SQL skills. How about that? Okay, so uh, let's look at how we can turn our table just now into uh, a, a, a real SQL table. So I'm going to show you this website called the SQL Fiddler. And the proper, not the, <laughs> the proper, uh, you, uh, we usually uh, read uh, SQL as SQL, okay? So let's go to this website. I'm gonna paste it in the uh, chat section as well. So let me paste it here. sqlfiddler.com, 
okay so this is a, a website for for you to uh, fiddle around and try out different uh, sql uh, commands okay sql commands and sql queries so let's create a table first there are two sides of the panel on your left hand side is for you to build the schema schema in layman's terms means this is your table design so we can use this panel to set up our database problem create tables insert and whatever other statements you need to prepare uh, your sample database okay so what we can do is we can run this command create table students uh, id is integer okay because the 1001 1002 we know that it's integer last name first name subject marks and then uh, the primary key uh, using id okay so this is a typical sql statement if you need more help in as uh, in terms of the uh, statement or you, you have any questions feel free to leave them in the in the chat or yeah drop drop us an email or facebook inbox all right and uh, you have to remember that SQL is a decorative language, meaning that when you use SQL, right, it's not it's not something that's progressive like other scripting. You can exploit. You have to know what you want to do. You have to, because every single statement, every single SQL command that you enter, right, is going to be executed as it is. You cannot just do try and error. So let's click on build schema and it will tell you that your schema is ready and on your right hand side is basically for us to run our select command so this is the first part there yeah? this is the uh, part to create table so what we are going to do is we are going to insert the data to the uh, table and to insert the data we are going to use this uh, sql query sql command called insert into okay so i'm going to go back to the sql feeder right and we run the insert into command um this is the table name okay table name is students and the first bracket here is the column so we are going to insert according to the sequence sometimes you don't really want uh, you don't really have to write every single uh, column into the table you can just write and update a few specific columns so here we choose all of them so we have id last name first name subject and marks and values is the values that you are going to write or you are going to insert so let me zoom in a little bit yeah so 1001 and muhammad firstly um, mathematics uh, so i got to check what are the rest uh, johnson lau okay so the next one will be 1002 johnson lau mathematics and johnson is 85 as well coincidentally okay uh, the 78 and then last but not least you have Michael Lau mathematics and 62 okay so this is the insert command so again we are going to use the build schema command to run and here we go you have set up your SQL table Alright, so next thing what we are going to do is we are going to retrieve data from our SQL table, right? So to retrieve data from our SQL table, we are going to use what I, we call the select command, okay? So select is for us to retrieve data. Uh, let me sh quickly show you. So you can see uh, the easiest SQL command that you see everywhere, right? It is called uh, select star, oh, sorry, from. students okay select star from students and once you execute this and you it gives the results in the form of a table yeah so select star from students and it gives you every it gives you everything so when your table is small you can use select star okay but when you when you have million rows or hundreds or thousands of rows please don't simply fire this command yeah please don't do that and the next thing i'm going to show you is uh, a condition a criteria a criteria that a, a set of criteria that you can sh uh, put in so that you can limit the number of records that's going to return so for example i want to look for students who's uh, whose name is uh, first name is Lau okay so I can say where first name equals to Lau and run the SQL 
and this will only return me the student's name who, whose name is Lau. All right, and we we can also use uh use it in the range form to look for, uh let's say the students results. So we want to look for students whose score is uh, below eighty marks. Let's say they they score uh, they didn't score A. All right, where uh marks less than eighty. Okay, so run SQL. We should have uh, two students here, right? Uh, yeah, Mama Ashran and Michael Lau. Okay, so this is uh, SQL select command. Yeah. Okay, so sometimes we might make some mistake, right? We might uh, we might have some error. So what are we going to do when you have error? Is that um, using the update command? All right, using the update command. Uh, we not to say error like We want to make some changes. So uh, let's say we have our students who is uh, let's see Johnson. Okay, Johnson. Uh, the Mama Fali one thousand one. Uh, he score eighty six instead of eighty five. You know, teachers you should uh, sometimes they mark wrongly, right? So we are going to use this update command and. Uh, we are going to do it here. Update the table name, which is students. Okay. Set marks equals to 86. And here we are going to specify a condition as well. If you don't specify a conditions or the filter, right, you are going to update the entire uh, table with 86. And this is very dangerous. So when you use update command, make sure that you always specify your range, which is where ID equals to 1001. So we are only going to update the marks for uh, Muhammad Fali. And here you can, you can see that. Uh, how important it is for a primary key here, yeah. And how Im how if not we are we we can't even know how to uh, update the table. So let's run this. Run SQL. Select star from students. And here you can see that see uh one thousand one Muhammad Vasli, and the score is updated. All right. And sometimes uh, you want to remove a record, you want to delete a record. For example, uh, Michael Lau, uh, the, the, he, he might, maybe he, he cheated in the exam, so his record needs to be removed from the exam and be voided, right? We can also use this command called delete and delete from uh, students, okay, where uh, ID equals to 1004. Okay, so you know that Michael Lau's ID is 1004. Now here is something that you you also need to be very careful, very cautious, because if you don't put where, your entire table is gone. Okay, <laughs> you are going <laughs> to remove all the data from your table. So it's very very dangerous command. Uh, use it with care. Make sure that you always put a where clause, and your where clause is very specific. All right. So build a schema, run the SQL. You see that, yeah. Uh, Michael Lau record is is gone, so we only have three three records left. So today I've show you a very basic introduction about SQL and how how you should learn SQL. If you if you go and look for online resources like tutorials, they they give you all sort of things like select command this and that. But basically, those are good if you if you have some basic knowledge. I always think that the basic part is missing. And this is what I think, uh, uh, and this is what I have covered. When you use SQL, you basically use it for four things. CRUD, this is what we call create, retrieve, update, and delete. So I've shown you how to create a table, how to retrieve the data, how to update, and how to delete. If you think about it, you know, uh, closer, right? Think about it further. Uh, this is basically all you do in managing your database and including when you are using it for uh, web website or mobile applications development as well. For example, Facebook, right? Uh, you either create tables, create some records, and then after you create the records, uh, like you post a status, that's called a create. And then after you have posted a status, when your friends want to see your latest status, right? They need to retrieve the status from the table. And sometimes you might want to make some changes and add it to your Facebook status. And sometimes you want to delete them. So this is the four uh, main operations when you are dealing with data. And that's about it. Create, retrieve, update, delete, and what we call it crude. Okay, thank you very much. And that's all for today's data science clinic. Uh, I hope it gives you a good understanding and a broad overview of what is SQL, SQL. And 
you can also go to W3 School, which is a good place to learn all these SQL commands. Let me let me get it for you. Okay, W3 W3 Schools. Uh, where's my Okay. All right. Uh, let me see if we have any questions. If there's any question, are we here for another couple of minutes? Okay. Seems like there is no questions from the uh, live chat. Okay, if there's any question as usual as usual leave it in the uh, comments later on and i'll help you and feel free to uh, go to our youtube channels and look for other relevant videos in data science full stack web development and of course growth marketing all right thank you very much and see you next week bye for now oh yeah and uh, for those of you who are celebrating happy chinese new year and for my friends who are not celebrating welcome back to work <laughs>